want to go now to Texas. Uh, we've got Houston police are holding a press conference. And we'll listen in now. Swinkard, uh, Chief Bainbridge, uh, Captain Spiller, uh, Chief Dobbins, and Captain uh, Nall here. Uh, ever since this incident occurred, uh, it's been a high priority of the Houston Police Department to uh, catch this suspect for a matter of, uh, for, 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 for many reasons. Uh, it's very rare when someone's killed and you can't even figure out a motive and they're actually targeted. Uh, and most importantly, it was creating a lot of panic in the Texas Medical Center. As we all know, it's a world, uh, world-renowned uh, jewel. And, uh, and so these people haven't slept. They actually didn't let me sleep last night either. They've been looking for this man. And this morning, I'll just get to, the, to what everybody's wondering. This is our suspect. The suspect's deceased. He committed suicide uh, when he was confronted by uh, two members of the Houston Police Department patrol assets here in Southwest Division. And I'm going to run you through it. Uh, we, uh, we're very fortunate in this city that we work very diligently to create uh, and, and build bridges of uh, trust. And uh, we're committed to relational policing, which really, really believe that the number one force multiplier for our city is the community we serve. And we serve everyone that lives, works, or visits the city of Houston. Uh, and so uh, this is case uh, without the public, we wouldn't be standing here today. Uh, you all know how we identified this suspect. We talked about it before and then this morning as we searched through the night. And we've been searching for days now for the suspect, actually most of the week since we identified him. Uh, uh, Sunday into Monday at 9:21, uh, the Houston uh, uh, Communication Center, Emergency Communication Center, received a call of a individual uh, chasing a, uh, a, a uh, suspicious person. At 9:25, that individual. Uh, by the way, the individual gave the wrong address, so we started responding, but we couldn't find where they're at. At 9:25, uh, the individual uh, calls and says that the uh, suspect is near the Jewish Community Center and the caller at that time at 925 said he believed that the suspect may be suspect uh, Pappas who we were looking for for the murder of Dr. House Connect. At 930 a.m. the caller uh, calls back because what occurred is this this uh, reporting party works for the Houston Parks Board. Uh, he was on duty near the near the bayou over here we have a problem with graffiti and he checks uh, that area on a regular basis to make sure nobody is committing the uh, uh, vandalizing uh, any walls or homes in that area. Uh, I've actually talked to the witness, and he said that he saw who, of an individual that turned out to be Mr. Pappas, suspect Pappas, uh, sitting there uh, near that area where there's a lot of vandals. Uh, he turned around, jumped the curb, came to make contact with Mr. Uh, Pappas, suspect Pappas, who, st who started walking away. Uh, as Pappas was probably about 7,500 yards from him when he actually yelled, hey, I'm sorry, I thought that you were a, uh, you were a graffiti vandal. And Pappas just, according to this witness, puts his arms out like this and then starts walking again. Um, the, uh, sus the witness then looked and actually found a wallet that uh, suspect Pappas either discarded intentionally or in unintentionally, we don't know, left it. Uh, there where he had been sitting. He looks in the wallet and realizes, finds the ID, recognize the name Pappas thanks to the efforts of the media uh, who have done been great partners in getting out this information and in social media in terms of uh, Twitter sphere and everything else we've used as the department. When he notices it's suspect Pappas, he calls back and he says, this is Mr. Pappas. I, I found his wallet and his ID. At 934, units finally, when we got a better location, arrived in the area. A solo officer patrol unit uh, at 935 uh, gets even a better address uh, right over here behind us where you all can see where, where the officers are way back. You see those police cars. One of our officers spots the suspect. The officer recognizes him, gets out of his police car, and at gunpoint starts ordering Mr. Pappas, starts giving commands. Suspect Pappas uh, had his left hand up and had his right hand secreted where the officer could not see his hand. Uh, the suspect said something about suicide and the officer said, let me see some hands or something of that nature. Uh, the suspect uh, has body armor on and uh, 
was not complying with our officer's command. When the officer saw he wasn't complying with the commands, he actually made a tactical repositioning, repositioned himself on the other side of his patrol car to put his engine block between him and the suspect. Uh, uh, fortunately for our officer, a second a backup unit arrived from the opposite direction, and when, as that officer started forming a T formation on the suspect, uh, suspect Pappas took the gun and shot himself in the head. He was pronounced at the scene, deceased by a, a Houston Fire Department uh, from, a, from what appears to be, a, again, a, a one single shot to the head, self-inflicted gunshot. Uh, I, I just am very thankful today for uh, quite a few things. Number one, uh, I'm thankful that uh, we're going to end this week uh, with a great sense of relief in the city of Houston and the Texas Medical Center. Uh, I'm thankful that we, uh, in this instance, the community came forward. The community was our absolute greatest force multiplier. And obviously our detectives, our patrol officers did not rest. Our command staff did not rest until we have this suspect uh, in custody. And I'm very thankful that this suspect, although he committed suicide, you normally don't put on a bulletproof vest when you're thinking about suicide. Uh, and uh, when you start thinking about, based on my experience, it's just an opinion and a hunch. But I thank God that that second officer got there when he got there because the suspect was not complying with the commands of the officer, kept his hand, uh, his, his, his uh, strong hand with the weapon in it secreted where the officer couldn't see it. And it wasn't until he saw that second officer. I'm, I'm convinced that had we not had that second officer arrive from the from this different uh, angle, uh, we might have had a shootout out here. And I and I'm just thank God that our officer was okay. I also thank God that uh, our witness, uh, who's really Cree that works for the Parks Board, uh, I, I really believe when he was doing this and stopped, he's trying to get him to come up. And uh, if you know anything about this suspect that we've talked about his skills, we've talked about the fact that he is a very uh, good uh, uh, marksman uh, and uh, actually had holsters secreted in his clothing that we found and so on and so forth. It's a very dangerous person. The other thing I want to say is that we will conduct an investigation here into this shooting like we do any other shooting. The investigation will continue. Now, this morning, uh, we've heard reports that some media outlets are putting that there was a hit list by this suspect, uh, that, that we had found the hit list. Let me just address that really quickly. Uh, when our officers, our investigators, conducted the search warrant on Sunday night and the, uh, on Sunday night and the Monday morning. Uh, Tuesday or, and Excuse me, Tuesday and the Wednesday. Pardon me. I, keep, I misspoke on that. Tuesday and the Wednesday morning at the suspect's uh, residence, they found a very extensive uh, intelligence file that this suspect had put together on uh, Dr. Hosknecht. Uh, he, had, he knew everything uh, that uh, you could possibly find on this man. And I'm not going to go any further into details just to say that it was very extensive. Inside that intelligence file, we found one sheet with some of uh, Dr. Hosknecht's information, but contained within that sheet was probably, uh, you know, a couple dozen names of potential doctors and other employees of the Texas Medical Center. Uh, when we determined that those were potential employees of the Texas Medical Center, we actually uh, passed that information on to the medical center and they, they dealt with it to make sure that the notifications uh, were being made and, and as they had identified those employees. Uh, again, this has been uh, the culmination of a lot of great work uh, by the men and women of the Houston Police Department, a lot of outstanding leadership by the men and women you see here behind me that have not slept, and obviously by our detectives uh, that, not, that have not slept. And lastly, I think this case illustrates that with the cooperation and with the engagement between local law enforcement, local law enforcement and the communities we serve, this is what we get. We get resolution, we get it quickly, and we get it before there's another loss of life. And with that, I'll open it up to any questions. Chief, do we know how uh, Pappas has been getting around? Was it on his bike? By foot that, that'll be part so of our straight to CNN's uh, Ed Lavendera for more. Ed, talk about the extent of this manhunt. Uh, well, it has been rather intense uh, throughout, really concentrated in the city of Houston. Police, uh, as you heard the police chief there talking about, that they had found his car inside his home and that they suspected that uh, Joseph Pappas left his home earlier this week on this 10-speed Schwinn bicycle, the same bicycle he suspected of having ridden uh, to carry out the attack and the murder of Dr. Mark Hoskinek. Uh, so really the, the, the search uh, for uh, uh, this suspect has really been concentrated 
incarcerated in in the Houston area simply because he, he was believed to have uh, left on uh, left on on his bicycle. So there wasn't a, a sense that he could have gotten terribly far. Uh, and obviously, this uh, kind of plays out to this scene because in the neighborhood that we're at is a, a little over a mile away from where Joseph Pappas uh, lived. So all of this very concentrated in the southwest area of Houston. Ed, thanks, and we'll be right back.